beauties, welcome back to another fabulous confabulation with me, Jay Mills. Now today I have the pleasure of speaking with the wonderful Shirley Williams, who is an Emmy-nominated producer. Currently, Shirley is the supervising producer for Refinery29 and produced various series, including Shady and Anon Anomaly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> day for you like oh wow a typical day <laughs> let's see well I mean it really depends on like what's happening production wise okay. and what's going on for the past few weeks my typical day has not felt like a very typical day it's been a bit chaotic um I've been working on this series for Adidas a series of videos so when I'm in production let's start there when mm -hmm. I'm in production a typical day can be me coming into the office if I'm not on set and assessing my workload and things okay. that need to get done, uh, connecting with my team members, the players, figuring out who needs to do what, mm -hmm. making sure everybody has an action plan and they're in action and executing their plan. Okay. If I am on set, depending on what role I'm serving, if I'm supervising on set, I'm making sure I'm managing, making sure that we're on schedule. Everybody has what they need. What they need, they feel they feel fully supported. Uh, production is running smooth. If I'm directing, uh, it is it's kind of the same thing, mm -hmm. except with a lot of creative involved with it. Mm -hmm. So the the typical day really depends on what stage I'm in. Okay. Uh, if, whether it be production, pre-production or post and okay. what role I'm serving mm -hmm. within those stages. Uh -huh. So what stage would you say is your favorite or which Ooh, would you like to take on the most? My favorite, <laughs> I think it depends on if I'm tired or not. <laughs> <laughs> because post and post, it's a post is much more, uh, it's like after the fact. Yes, yeah. post mm -hmm. is much more structured. <laughs> you know you're gonna come in at a certain time. You're gonna leave at a certain mm -hmm. time. There's there's usually not a lot of players. Um, you're you know you're coming into one location into an office. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a lot more structure. You're there's a plan in place. You're attacking that plan. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I honestly I love all facets mm -hmm. of it all. Like I love pre production because. There's a lot of creativity that goes into it. There's a lot of planning. There's a lot of development. I love production itself because you're on your feet. You're moving. It's hustle and it's bustle. Uh, but I, 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 it's, I can't choose. I don't want to choose. That's okay. That's okay. But it's like, I love like it all. depending on your mood. It depends on okay. my mood. It all depends right. on my mood. That's nice. Right now, <laughs> I just came off of a, a very long stint of being out in the field. So okay. right now, in this moment, Post is my favorite. Okay. Because I'm tired and I want to be <laughs> like, settled I just for a sit. moment. <laughs> I just <wanna> sit. <laughs> exactly. I get that. But that's cool that you, you know, have that variation and mm -hmm. it's not just like a, you know, sitting at your desk all the time. Like you get to, you know, be right. on your feet at some points and then like relax, not relax, but like, you know, have a more structured, you know, schedule exactly. at certain points. So that's exactly. really cool. Yeah. So now how do you, when you're deciding, you mm -hmm. know, what um, projects you're producing, how, what do you look for in a script or in a story? Yeah, um, I love, I love human storytelling. I love, okay. I love people. I love being connected to people. I love talking to people. I love hearing people's stories. I love giving people a space and a platform and an opportunity for them to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people sometimes grow up or experience, um, experiences where they're not being heard or they feel like they don't matter or people don't care. So, like, mm -hmm. I love being able to engage with people in a way in which uh, they feel as if they matter and as if they do have a voice and they are being heard and that somebody on the planet cares. So, mm -hmm. I love, uh, I just love, I love documentary style okay. type content. I also love narrative. I love being able to, like, build out story 
like using my imagination and Mm -hmm. scripting it out and then having that thing come to life and then I also love telling real life stories so I'm realizing through talking to you I'm like I just (laughs) like everything you do you do you're like I like this but I also like this right and and it also uh it's so funny Often when people are like, but if you had to choose, I'm like, oh, mm, no, I don't want to choose. Yeah, and, I don't and you don't have to. Choose. No. <laughs> no. You briefly touched on this, but like, what are the responsibilities of being a producer or a supervising producer? Yeah, um, we, we kind of live in a world where it's changing. And it depends on the, the production you're on, like a supervising producer role can be on a a unscripted reality television show can be very different from a supervising producer role in digital. Okay. I am currently working in digital, and my role here is a supervising producer. So, one, I very much support my executive producer. Her head is in a lot of different other things, like pre-sale and just a bunch of other stuff Mm -hmm. that I'm not privy to. Mm -hmm. Um... But wherever she needs support, whatever that may be, whether it's making a deck, uh, jumping in on other producers' projects to be a third eye or to be a supporting hand, whatever may come up for her, I'm like her right hand, her right woman. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) And I support her where she needs support. Um, But as far, aside from that, I also support the other producers and like challenging them in story and thinking about bigger picture and okay. the what ifs and trying new things okay. and uh and where they may have a challenge and they're not sure how to how to navigate or how to handle a challenge and then I jump in and I support okay. in that way whether it be from budgeting and scheduling to creative it okay. can be so many different things nice yeah. I'm like a helper Okay. I'm a helper. Alrighty. Yeah. Because sometimes I get confused with like what a producer exactly does, but that was a good way of explaining it. So now does director and producer go hand in hand? Like No. No, not it at doesn't. all. Okay. No. And just so you know, like I always say a producer's responsibility is to produce results. Okay. Uh and there's so many different types of producing, but pr- pr- of so many different types of producers, right? But mm-hmm. overall, our responsibility is to have a task, execute it, produce results. Okay. Got it. Now, producing and directing do not go hand in hand. Okay. So, a director's job, right, is to, whew, it's so, yeah, right, mm-hmm. it's so many different things. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many producers that, that they were like, I'm not creative, I just, I just, yes. I like logistics, mm-hmm. right? They're like, don't hand me no creative, <laughs> hand me logistics, I'll execute logistics, right? Okay. Right? Um, I'm grateful and fortunate enough to where my brain can do both. You do both, both right? I, I was both. like, okay, that's why I mm-hmm. asked that. Okay. Yeah, and I but love it's two both. Different I love yeah. both. Right now, I will say if I had to choose, mm-hmm. I choose directing over producing. Okay. But people know me and count on me as a producer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm growing and being known as uh as a director as well. Nice. Right. Nice. Woo, go Shirley. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that was so um so a producer's right. A producer's job is to is to execute, create, uh, create results, mm-hmm. and really producers support directors in uh, making sense. their visions come, come to life. To life. Yeah. So what would you say is your most favorite project that you have worked on so far? My most favorite project that I've worked on so far it has to be there's this this young girl. Her name is Cookie. Okay. Uh, a year ago, I produced this piece on her. She's an eight, at the time, she was an eight-year-old wrestler, and we got to tell her story, and Cookie (laughs) is fascinating. She's, like, ballsy, she's tough, she's gritty. As she should. Yeah, (laughs) and it was was just so much fun to work on, and I love the way that the project uh, turned out. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know when you came to the, I met Shirley at an NYU panel, and so you were talking about how you first started in performing. Yeah. So what switched, like what sparked the more producing side as opposed to performing? Yeah, because I couldn't get a job, and my mama was like, you better pay these student loans. That's what (laughs) sparked it. 
But I still, <laughs> no, when I got out of school, I had a really, really hard time uh, getting cast. Okay. Uh, it was super challenging for me. And I, that if, you, if you're not getting cast, you're not making money, money right? right? Mm-hmm. And I had to grow up and be an adult. And it's not my parents' responsibility to suffer mm-hmm. <laughs> because I want to, right? I get, I get to make a dream come true while being responsible. Mm-hmm. So I... Uh, I was letting my friends know I was looking for work, and a friend let me know that she knew someone who was hiring, like, a very, very entry-level job uh, as a transcriber right. on an Oprah show, mm-hmm. and then from there, it snowballed, but I I am, like, I love performing arts. I mm-hmm. love acting. I, I love everything. Like, I... My intent and my goal is to get back to it. Really? Yeah. Okay. So sometime nice. in the future, I need to like get like clear on that and start mm-hmm. really start to work it into my big picture goals. But absolutely love nice. it. And okay. Yeah. So you still... you didn't like run from it. Like no. it's still here. Okay. It's good. It's still here. It's still. We present. love the performing arts. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> what are some challenges and obstacles um, in this industry? You know, being a woman and a woman of color. Yeah. Um. So I'd say that it's, I feel like anytime you're in a space where I can only speak for myself, Mm -hmm. I won't generalize for everyone else. When anytime I am in a space where I look different, sound different, feel different, um, so many things for me sometimes kick in, whether it be I become insecure, um, Mm -hmm. unsure, uh, and it, it could, it can, it, it can, it, it constantly forces me to keep checking in, right? Okay. Like, what am I doing? Why am I here? Mm. For what purpose? What are my intentions? You know, so that I can, I can keep myself rooted and grounded in the, in those things. Because if not, I can easily get swayed mm-hmm. and get discouraged and become, and like, it's, it's okay to experience um unsurety but to actually live in it right and not like not step out of that that's the danger right right I allow myself to to experience it and Mm -hmm. be with it but to quickly check check in with myself and to get out of it Mm -hmm. so I think for me being black and being a I have a very unique voice it's high pitch I sound like a (laughs) child sometimes sometimes for me it's it's just that alone, right? That yeah. that uniqueness. I mm-hmm. sound very different from everybody yeah, in the room, and it, right. sometimes it makes me a little scared to speak up. Sometimes it makes me a little nervous to like voice my opinion. But right, like mm-hmm. I have something to say and something that needs to be heard always. Right. So I have to constantly check in with myself and constantly reassure and reaffirm that I am perfect, whole, and complete, and I'm here. Because I'm supposed to be here, and right, that. and I'm needed, yeah. and I'm wanted. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that that's one of the challenge. It's more so, it's more so of a self challenge. Okay. And I'm very much aware that there are other challenges that are that are alive and well, systematic challenges. Mm-hmm. You know, things like racism, and it, you know, yeah, all these, yeah, all yeah. these things, right? And mm-hmm. um. And, and when they come up, I find ways that I think are the best ways in the moment to combat them. Mm-hmm. And I try to keep it moving and not uh, not stick with it, not right. make it a thing. Because mm-hmm. if, right, if you make it a thing, it could become it, a, a thing. thing. And right. then, like, the and thing then, is now a thing. Right, and now you're holding, holding back. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then making sure that when, right, I see the thing, I've acknowledged the thing, I know the thing exists making sure that I'm creating space and opportunity for other uh, black and brown girls who look like me Mm -hmm. and can relate uh, so that they have space and opportunity and possibility. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I love that you mentioned the challenge with yourself because, I mean, I ask this question a lot and they, they, you know, 
the answer I give back is the, the systematic racism. Yeah. But there is, like, that's the truth, that there is yeah. that challenge mm -hmm. with yourself and your confidence and, yeah. you know, how you present yourself and feeling that self-awareness and stuff. So I really love that, and I love those three questions that, you, you know, that you check in with yourself Absolutely. with. And so that's very important, so yes. I'm going to, you yeah. know, write that in. How important would you say creating your own work is? And do you feel that creating your own work helps you be where you are now? Yeah, I actually, I was on a, a long flight last night from L.A. back to New York City, and uh, I was just looking at, um, I was looking at my landscape, my current landscape, my creative landscape as it is right now, and just mm -hmm. thinking about ways in which I can grow, and I was just like, you know, Shirley, I've, I've been very fortunate enough to have incredible opportunities really handed to me, and mm -hmm. I, I'm so blessed, I'm so grateful to God. Uh, but like, how do I keep, keep building upon and keep improving and, and keep climbing, uh, mm -hmm. and not waiting for someone to keep handing me an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think for, for the past, maybe like two yeah. years, I definitely don't say I was waiting because I've always been working. Right. Um, but just to say like, okay, let's say for the next two months, the opportunities that come to me, let's say that there's a, a dry spell or it slows down, mm -hmm. um, then what, right. you know, then my craft is on hold for, for two months or whatever. Um, and I was just thinking that I need to be more intentional with creating work and creating opportunities mm -hmm. for myself. Versus just, tr you know, waiting, because mm -hmm. essentially that is what I'm doing, waiting for the next thing to mm -hmm. come down. Um, so for the past, to answer your question, I'll say for the, like the past two years, I haven't been doing a lot of creations for myself. I've been doing a lot of partnering with people, okay. a lot of um, jumping on a project and serving okay. a role. Um, but just last night I was saying, Okay, in the next few months, I'm going to be very, very intentional on creating for myself so that I can keep growing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's so important because I know that's something I also struggled with. Mm. Struggle with being an actor because you're like, well, I need to wait for the casting director to cast me and yeah. then I'll start no, acting. But wait. no, it's not. And it's I've learned not. that and I've, you know, done my own stuff. Yeah. But like, yeah, I think it's a very, like, you just have to. That has to click for yeah. you. Like, you can't yeah. wait. Because now we're, we're also living in a world where people are creating their yeah. own stuff. Like, yeah. we have YouTube and all these other things, so there's, like, no excuse not to. No. You also have your own production company, I right? Do. Willie V Productions. Yes, yeah. So what inspired you to create that company? Yeah, so uh, my grandfather's name is William Bowling. Okay. Um, and my grandma will always call him Willie. <laughs> which both of my grandparents are deceased and it's sort of a way not sort of it is a way for me to constantly stay connected to them they were um my granddaddy was a minister and my grandma was his little first lady and <laughs> they were all everything they did was about community was about others um their whole their whole life's work was focused out into the world and really the content that Willie B Productions creates and will continue to create uh, is work that inspires hope, joy, and draws people closer to God. Yes. So that's where it all inspired by what it was all in what it was all inspired by, and that's what we uh, continue to look to do. So right now, I'm working on a documentary, a full length documentary mm -hmm. about this minister. His name is Martin Thomas. And Martin Thomas, 25 years ago, as a minister, committed a very, very horrible murder. He went away to prison, served 23 years in Indiana State Prison. And while he was there, he completely changed the culture of the prison. Wow. He was partnering with, as an inmate, partnering with the governor, the commissioner, and creating specialized programs for inmates. Um, he... Unfortunately, um, while he was there, he uh, divorced his him and his wife divorced um, him and his he had he has five sons. Um, their relationship was completely just ruined. Uh, he did remarry his caseworker that he met in prison wow. the day that he was released. 
Um, but Martin's story is just a story of, of redemption, of forgiveness, of love, of hope. And that's one of the big stories that, uh, the first and really big story that Willie B Productions is producing out of our, out of our, out of our house. And I mean, I just can't wait for Martin's story just to like go out into the world and to see the impact Mm because he's he's a powerhouse and the work that he's doing in Indiana is just absolutely phenomenal. This is basically your way of giving back, you know, with this production company because you're spreading light on these stories that are not, you know, going to be told anywhere else. So that's wonderful. Oh my goodness. What do you like to do on your free time? Uh, I'm a fitness junkie. Okay. I love, love, love working out. I need to go to the gym with you. I need to start going to the gym. <laughs> I love working out. I love running. I love exercising. I am obsessed with my family. Nice. Uh, I have so many nieces and nephews. I'm obsessed with my sister. Um, I love to travel. Okay. I literally was counting in the past 90 days. I've been on a plane 22 times. No yeah. way. Yeah, I'm going to take a beat, though. I'm going to pause because I'm really, really tired. Okay. But I love to travel. I love music. My uh, my boyfriend is like a he's a weirdo when it comes to music like I've never met somebody who knows and understands music on his level but I love when he sends me new music to check out and listen um listen to you I love music I love I'm I'm an art I mean I'm a student of art so Mm -hmm. I'm always watching short films long Mm -hmm. form films television shows so I do a lot Actually Work should. is like Good just a you. thing. I'm like, right, you're living. You're living. <laughs> right, you're living. <laughs> yeah. I'm living. Do you have any last advice for the beauties? <laughs> advice? Mm. Mm. For, you know, aspiring producers and directors. Um, be a yes to any and everything within your moral compass. <laughs> right? I think that was one of the, one of the, things that help me win big is when I I don't I, I, I won't say that I never was not a yes but when I realized the value of saying yes it shifted me to quickly being willing willing to jump in and try new things right and I it it gave me permission to take risk uh it gave me permission to uh fail it gave me permission, period, like, mm-hmm. just try new things, so yeah. I would say, whatever it is, what, somebody calls on you to, to do something, be a yes, you want to try a new thing, be a yes, be a yes for yourself, be a that. yes for be others, a yes. Yeah, be a yes, <laughs> so um, this concludes our interview, thank you so yeah, much for chatting absolutely. with me, absolutely, before we go, I do have a gift for you, and Ooh, you can open it, it off the camera, oh. <laughs> Let's see. I love presents. All right. It's a Girls with Beauty and Brain shirt. Yes. So, you know, you can, you know, flaunt down New York City with your Girls with Beauty and Brain I shirt. I love it. Rep it. so cute. Yes. So, remember, guys, Shirley is a girl with beauty and brains, and so are you. <laughs> so-